Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Atala, and today we're going to talk about rectal prolapse or rectal prosedentia. There are really four ways to go about tackling this problem. The first of which is a repair of the pelvic floor itself. Uh, oftentimes, particularly in the elderly patients that develop rectal prolapse, there will be levator diastasis that requires repair. The second way to repair rectal prolapse requires a suspension fixation type approach, such as the Ripstein repair, but also presacral uh, rectopexy, which is more commonly done. And oftentimes, presacral rectopexy is done in conjunction with the third category, which is a resective type procedure, such as uh, re anterior resection with rectopexy, which nowadays can also be done and offered laparoscopically. The fourth category is perineal procedures, and this includes anal encirclement procedures such as the uh, Thirsch wire, uh, which is much less commonly done, um, but also, of course, includes the perineal rectosigmoidectomy, or the Altmeyer procedure. Now, the Altmeyer procedure, which is often referred for uh, the elderly patient who is otherwise too infirm to tolerate an abdominal resection and rectopexy. When you look at the results from the Altmeyer procedure, the mortality should really be around zero. And that's what it was in Altmeyer's original series, and it's been shown to be close to or near zero in most series, including that of Kim and Friedman. Now, when you look at recurrence, well, that varies depending on which series you look at. In Altmeyer's original series, the recurrence rate was only 3% quite an acceptable number. However, in other folks that tried to duplicate Altmeyer's um, success, uh, the recurrence rate was somewhat higher and as high uh, as, high as uh, 50% in Friedman's series 